Welcome to the Disruptive Social Care Podcast with social care provocateur and social media queen Chill Ayers and myself, Stuart Arnott, founder of Mindings, a service dedicated to bringing social media to the disconnected. In this week's show, we aim to spread the word about what's going on in the world of disruptive social care, amplify the voices of people with great ideas that few people have ever heard about, help our communities connect and collaborate and interview thought leaders across the sector. Well, Shirley, hello. Show number 12 and over two and a half thousand listens and views. A thousand of them, of course. Um, The videos on YouTube. Quite a milestone. And I hope the podcasts are inspiring people to believe that change is possible by helping organisations to understand the power of digital technology and social media to connect the disconnected and the power to influence social good. Absolutely. And a great response to our interview with Mark Brown. And I was delighted to learn from at Boncresol that the Disruptive Social Care podcast interview with at Mark One in Four <coughs> is being used as a teaching resource. That's fantastic. I was thrilled with that. And uh, yeah, the, the response from the interview with Mark was fantastic. Loads of tweets about it. All positive, unless you've got something I didn't <laughs> know about, but all positive. And uh, I mean, I thought it caused, you know, he spoke a lot of common sense, but his ideas seem to cause quite a stir. Well, you know, I, I, I think there is a really big debate about new mental health. Um, and I'm so glad that um, we've hosted such an interesting interview. Absolutely. It was a delight to have Mark on the show. Okay. And, and probably a timely reminder also that um, the Health and Care Professions Council have confirmed that people listening to and reflecting on the disruptive social care, um, that counts towards people's continuing professional development. That's great. Very happy to be contributing to that. So Shirley, what's been happening with you in the last couple of weeks in social care? It continues to be incredibly busy. And and one of the things that occurs to me, Stu, you know, everybody says, you know, the public don't understand about social care. And one of the things I'm really picking up from the podcasts is that people are starting to understand the complexity, the challenges and the innovations that are happening in social care. I mean, quite honestly, we could do one of these podcasts every day. That is so true, because I certainly see the script rewriting itself um, every other day. Yes. Uh, there are so many things that are happening. I think I'd better mention that on the show. And then the time's passed because it's two weeks to the next show. And, yes. and OK, we'll do something else. And then literally, something I want to talk about later on in the show, it just happened last night when I was listening to the radio. Um, and I quickly had to write something to, to put in the show. So, yeah, it evolves quickly. Um, quite challenging. And, and I accept that, you know, we are missing out on, on quite a lot. But I'm also mindful that we're trying to keep this within a sort of 25-minute interview because that actually suits people. Sure. But um, one, one of the things I learned about was the wonderful Healthy Living Centre. And this was through at Who's Shoes blog post, Changing the World of Dementia, One Tweet at a Time, which actually talks about the impact of the dementia challenges and how they're using social media. And, you know, we, we also get a delightful mention, I have to say, but definitely worth a read. That was lovely. Uh, Twitter kind of melted that weekend. I was out in the <laughs> afternoon with my daughter and I kept getting these <laughs> updates from people talking about it. It was great. It was delightful. And um, healthy, the, the, the Healthy Living Centre is a very impressive community resource in Lambeth which has an engaging, inclusive and inspired approach to supporting people with dementia. And personally, I think every council needs the magic of Simona Florio, uh, who is one of the big forces behind the development of the Healthy Living Centre. Absolutely, and they've been using social media so well to spread their message. It was really impressive. I really enjoyed that. They've got a great Facebook page with photos, videos, audio booths. Not a lot of people are using audio booth, but they use audio booth really effectively to spread the message about what they're doing. So definitely, definitely worth looking at. And a shout out for the Healthy Living Centre. Good for them. And as you know, I do follow a lot of events online. And I increasingly wonder about the value of organisations that are just using Twitter and hashtags to broadcast and talk at people from an event rather than engaging and discussing, discussing issues as they arise. So I read an interesting and timely post from Tim O'Reilly. It's not about you, the truth about social media marketing. Um, In short, 
the secret of promotion in the age of social media isn't to promote yourself, it's to promote others. Absolutely. Claire O.T. did a good article. I mentioned that at the tail end of the show last time, but it's worth mentioning again, and it was about using Twitter to extend the reach of your live events. It was Absolutely. relevant to that. Yes. And I also attended um, an exploration on digital technology in later life, which is hashtag DT uh, later. Now, this discussed a wide range of issues, including funders don't know what's being funded and older is not a useful label. Both things that we talk about quite often. (laughs) Well, this is what I thought. (laughs) Led by um, at David Wilcox and supported by the Nominate Trust, it was an amazing gathering of talent, experience and expertise with some really interesting conclusions. Now, the exploration is ongoing, so if you were not able to attend, you can share your thoughts on the Social Learning website, and we'll be putting a link up to that. But, I mean, what really struck me at the event was how little awareness there is about all the digital technology innovations that are available now, today. Um, So I think my guide to 50 digital technology ideas to improve social care um, will be greatly welcomed. I already have a waiting list. I hope so. I I don't yet have a publication date. (laughs) I hope it's read widely though when it has come out. (laughs) Now, other key key themes from from the event (coughs) were questions about how can we use online communities to keep people... Um, connected in times of transition, such as retirement, bereavement, even moving to residential care. And another critical area about the need for personalised learning in terms of skills, access. I mean, motivations to use digital technology vary considerably and one size does not fit all. And a critical area is what funders can do together to share learning. You know, when you think that there are probably about 10 major funders and um, they're supporting so many different projects, but there isn't one place where you and I could go to find out what they're learning from all the pilots that they're funding at the moment. At the moment, Stu, I say, advisedly. Um, Now, there's been an excellent report from the New Economics uh, Foundation and Scope about doing services differently, local innovations for disabled people. Now, this report presents examples of innovations that have been developed by local authorities and providers, and it shows how reconfiguring services can really improve disabled people's lives and do things differently. And the three principles that they highlight for innovative services and support are relevant for all social care services. You know, there's a wider, rather than just disabled people, for older people, for people with mental health um, challenges. So the best outcomes in services are achieved by placing disabled people at the centre of transformation from the start. And that seems very obvious, doesn't it? Absolutely, it really does. Uh, not sure it's happening as much as it should be, sadly. And out of their research, the the three principles for innovation in services and support that emerged were that innovation should improve the lives of disabled people by providing choice and control to them so that they can participate fully in society. Absolutely. Give choice and control to them, not yep. control them. Yes. Ab- yes. Absolutely. I mean, innovative services identify and respond to what disabled people actually want, rather than assuming this on their behalf. And innovation should seek to build on and develop the capabilities of disabled people, starting from what they can do, an asset-based model, rather than what they can't, the deficit model. And to bring about real change, services need to be co-designed, co-developed and co-delivered by disabled people and disabled people's organisations themselves. Wow, this is great. I, I, I thoroughly recommend this report. I was so excited. And, you know, and it also rings, you know, when, when we um, did the interview with Martin, I mean, very much what he was saying, it could potentially have an impact across the whole of adult social care. So I'm following, following you know, the sort of that discussion with great interest. And I've also been thinking about how online influence may link with evidencing social impact. And that's after reading the challenging post at Paul Bromford about the delicate balance of online and offline influence, with, I have to say, a great quote from Mark Schaefer. Your ability to influence comes from what you have to offer. 
always a good quote from Mark Schaefer. <laughs> and evidencing social impact underlies evaluation on the cognitive and digital edge uh, written by Kieran Kirkland for the Nominet Trust, which is about storytelling, evaluating change, and, and they've developed a really thoughtful framework. I mean, social impact, social investment, they are going to be subjects that we return to in the future because there's an enormous amount of work being done around them. So um, so bear that in mind that I'm going to put social impact into every podcast in the next six months. <laughs> nominate trust have been busy. They have indeed, yes. Um, and to mention... A report that I wrote for the Higher Education Academy, which is based on the findings of a survey about how social work academics are using social media to support student learning, is now available online. And I, I, I mean, I think that the, the conclusions are actually relevant across the whole of the higher education sector, because you know, developing skills in digital literacy is becoming increasingly important for both academics and students. Social work academics would benefit from training in the use of social media tools and providing case studies and sharing good practice helps to make the case for more widespread adoption of social media. And I think, you know, there's a, there are so many organisations who are struggling still to make sense of the impact and importance of digital technology and social media. Um, I mean, the fact is that, um, you know, according to the findings of the report, the majority of academics, they're, they're not actually currently using social media to communicate and support practice educators who have an important role in providing supervision for social work students on placement. Now, this could be a reflection of the fact that many local authorities um, do not allow their staff to access social media channels in the workplace. And this is an issue I'm going to return to in a future po podcast because this has significant implications for how local authorities are engaging and getting feedback um, from the many people now using social media. Well, there's very much um, a culture of delivery and not interaction. Yes. Um, but I think um, people's expectations about interaction um, are increasing by the week. As, due, as the success of patient opinion demonstrates. Well, absolutely. You know, and, and I think the thing is, there are some local authorities who are using um, a social media um, as an engagement tool very, very effectively. And we've mentioned them, you know, people like Monmouthshire. Um, there are some real leaders in the field. Nottingham. But the fact is, there's still a lot of local authorities who paradoxically may have their own Twitter channel, but don't allow their staff to access it. No, so they do it anonymously. Yes. <clears throat> well, just wait till um, local authority opinion <laughs> comes out. That would be interesting. <laughs> and, 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 and a sort of a, a mention, actually, um, nothing with about us without us, written by the lovely Claire O.T., which is a really interesting write-up about how the newly developing health and wellbeing boards can use social media for engagement and, and getting a sense of what the priorities are in a community. Definitely worth a read. Absolutely. Always clear rates, great stuff all yes. the time, always worth a read. So, so that's a sort of you know, brief summary of, um, uh, 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 of, of what I think um, are some really interesting issues that have arisen. How's your, how's your <laughs> fortnight gone? My crazy life, my uh, <laughs> dragon's den life. Well, I, I tell you what, I aspire one day to be one of the dragons and I promise I'll never say to us, come back to us once you've got some traction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not an angel investor if you're if you're expecting traction. We're coming to you to get angel investment in order to, to get traction. Oh, one of my bugbears. Anyway, uh, so I was at um, the Set Square Investor Showcase event last week. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, yeah, that was very good. I think um, we went down very well there. Um, one of the delights I was to see our friends at Bardowl there as well. Um, because they're connected with um, Bath University, the indicator down there. And so, yeah, they were pitching as well. And so it was great to get a, a greater insight on what they're doing. Yes. And it links to an interesting story that, um, as I mentioned, that I heard on In Touch last night um, with the lovely Peter White, one of my favourite broadcasters. Uh, so Bardell, basically they are um, the Spotify for audiobooks. And for nine ninety nine a month, you can get access to every book. 
um, and they've done some deals with some of the major publishers. And uh, you can use this service now. And there's a, a fantastic selection of audiobooks. And audiobooks um, is something which actually is, you know, the use of is growing. And, mm. you know, particularly in the mainstream, it's something mm. that, you know, people um, like on the move, when they're out jogging, when they're on train journeys, etc. So actually, audiobooks um, is very popular. And the biggest player at the moment in that um, is Audible, uh, where you have to pay per book and download that. But these days... Young people, people are more accustomed to streaming services. Yes. And so what they've done is a kind of an audiobook streaming type service. Mm. But it's it's for every book. So you can listen to five mm. minutes of the book. And what, what if their business model basically is based upon um, they pay the publishers, um, who then pay the authors, by the second of listening. So you're not buying a title, you know, for a tenner, what you're doing, you're paying for, for listening to, to that. And, and the more of the book that you, you listen to, the more get paid. So that's what they're doing. Now... Uh, last night on In Touch, Peter White was talking about that the Ombudsman had criticised Suffolk County Council uh, for cancelling its talking book service. I don't know if you'd heard about that. Basically, the RNIB complained. Um, there was 250 people who had lost out. Um, RNIB run an audiobook service, and it's eighty pounds, eighty-two pounds a year as their annual subscription for their audiobook service. Um, I'm not quite sure how extensive that library is, but basically, in, in an effort to save, well, two hundred and fifty times eighty-two pound is twenty thousand five hundred pounds. They've effectively just taken yeah. away books from from blind people. There, talking book service. I mean, it, it, it is so valuable. You yeah. know, I like. I I know lots of uh, of people who use it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great service. My mother used to work in a library, so I certainly know the, the importance of that, you know, the, the mm. cassettes. Um, mm. And again, it wasn't something that was just used by blind people. It was something, you know, it was, it was a mainstream yep. product. Um, so my challenge is, who's going to be the first local authority to uh, give out um, subscriptions to Bardo? Nine nine ninety nine a month, you are giving mm. um, people there the ability to access every book ever written for nine ninety nine a month. I, I think that's a really interesting idea, and certainly, you know, I mean, if if we, people with their personal budgets may actually feel that's great value for money. No, that's a good idea. Every week you come in with personal budgets, and I keep thinking that's absolutely right. I need to think more about personal care budgets because I wonder if that would come under care personal care budgets because that's absolutely yes. contributing to the well being. Yes. Um, of a blind person. That's yes. a great idea. Well, there you go. Yes. So, oh. uh, okay, Bookmeister, you owe me that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, other thing was, um, I was just discussing with uh, with Dom there, our engineer, CFAX closing down. Yes. Um, after 38 years on the BBC. And that is sad. I'm not just being nostalgic, uh, you know, um, and because, yes, it's been a long time since I'd actually used it because you can't mm. use it on a digital television. You can only use it on analogue televisions. But the thing is that the utility of CFAX, yes. the brevity of the content, the ease of accessibility yes. um, has not been replaced. Yes. They've got this red button service, which is more difficult to use. It seems to be slower. It has less content. Um you know, I just remember, you know, you'd be in television the minute the programme finished, bam, 101, get the news headlines. The minute you heard um, of a news story uh, breaking somewhere, it would be on the radio or whatever, or, you know, you'd bam, you'd be on 101, get the headline right away and get, get the gist of the story in this nice, brief, succinct way the CFAX did. Um, and I think this is a huge impact on um, digital exclusion. Because nowadays, yeah. of course, you know, if you hear about something or news is breaking or something, you put your phone in your pocket and you quickly go on the internet. Yep. And what happens if you don't have a smartphone? What happens if you're blind? What happens if you can't use a mobile phone because you have a cognitive or visual, you know, physical impairment? Um, the ability on this very simple interface just to, yeah. you know, bam, text, 101 news or sports results and stuff like that. That's, that's, I think there's a huge loss to digital exclusion. And I cannot believe that it saved a lot of money. Uh, you know, I can I, I don't believe that there was a team of a hundred people creating CFAX. That really, I, I bet you most of it could be automated. So I, I think that's sad. I think it's a loss. I think it's a mistake. I wish that they had done some more direct replacement for that. So there you go. That's my rant of the week. Okay. <laughs> Other yes. things I was up to. So uh, my wife. Uh, this has got nothing to do with social care, but I don't care. I'm going to give it a plug anyway. My wife launched a new business <laughs> called The Briefing, the briefing.com. And it's a, it's a site, basically, it's um, R&D news curated by experts. Uh, and it's uh, there's various sites out there in which they um, automatically collect news in. But this is, um, Sunny has some experts all around the world in various um, 
scientific field who are curating all the best news, all the most interesting news in R&D out there. So I was there at that event and we filmed it. We had people like the the chief technical officer of IBM, Heather Dunlop Jones there, and did a, did a speech. So that was good. That was a good event. Well, I hope we're going to put a link up. I've been busy. Yes, you certainly have. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. Uh, what else have we been doing? Uh, our Mindings app uh, for Android devices on Google Play. So we're making it easier than ever to get Mindings. Excellent. So go into Google Play and just search for, wow. it, for Mindings on there. You can do that. We've written some new instructions, which is tortuous. I hate writing instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just had to lock myself in a room and do it. So we've done that. Um, uh, we've done something really interesting on um, with Facebook. Um so we do check-ins and tags now. So anybody out there who knows about Facebook, um, if you go to a place and you can do a quick check-in, so, you know, I am at such and such a restaurant, we can now actually display that. So that's basically additional content. So again, when I phone up my dad, my dad knows more what I've been up to. He's more yeah. connected with our life. We've got more to talk about. And because we also do tags as well, he knows who I'm with and, you know, oh, you were there with such and such a person. So, I, you know, it's just more of this. We're just trying to create more and more interesting content uh, for that. And my sister's a big check-in fan so that's um that's been good um other stuff like new user settings and a nightly email so um you can now tell if the mindings viewer that you know your friend your yeah. relative your loved one is actually switched on or if it switches off accidentally or whatever you get an email you get a message so you know it's switched off it's pretty neat so that's useful mm. yeah so it's a nice little solution for that one and we're currently working out a way to share BBC news stories so it's partly connected with this yes. cur- curation of stuff yes uh, I mean there was a funny story we've been trying to do this for a while and one of the things that we started doing was pulling in RSS feeds so you know RSS mm-hmm. syndication mm-hmm. Um, where, where they have um, news headlines and things so we thought well, let's automate that and we used the Waltham Forest Guardian as an example so we pulled in that and the first headline that came up on the minding screen was 82 year old woman mugged in her own home I thought mm. oh dear no we cannot do automatic <laughs> curation for that that needs to be something that has some human mm. curation but then I realised that pretty much every day I'll be in the BBC news site and I'll you know click on the Facebook button yeah. and share a story and then I'll put in my own you know line of inspired wisdom as a comment on that and I thought that would be useful in itself so um if you go into YouTube and you're watching this program on YouTube, I'm going to put up a little caption up on the screen just now. This is what the mock-up is. So if you want to comment mm. on whether you think that's good or not, um, then do so. Uh, my dad, uh, as usual, is uh, tester number one. So we're trying that out on him at the moment. So it pulls in the news headline. There's a little bit of um, metadata we discovered at BBC2. That they, they tag each story with a one-sentence summary of what the story is. And then you mm. can put your little comment. So again, it's just that little thing. My dad loves it. He always likes these immediately. So I know that that is sharing news stories with us. It's just it's more about that connection, sharing stuff. Well, it well it's a bit of an update on um, on, on CFAX, isn't it? You know the one liner, so that people keep connected. Yeah. Um, and I would say a few viewers have commented, Stu, that we we haven't got the minding screen here. <laughs> and can can it be brought back, please? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking about that. It's just it kind of blows out. It goes a bit too bright there. Just, Doesn't matter. Uh, people like it. Oh, okay. Then I'll bring that in. I'll put some nice pictures of my daughter on it. Then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this section of the program. It's called Follow Friday because it's Friday that we release the show and also because people who use Twitter use the hashtag, hashtag FF, to recommend people to their community. So what uh, tools do you have for us and who should we be following this week? Well, I um, I regularly use at TwitCleaner which provides a useful analysis of who I follow. And it can be very revealing about how different users engage on Twitter. And I tend to use that every week. Um, And it's free. So uh, my first tip. Uh, My second one is I use at Nutshell Mail because it provides a weekly summary of all my Twitter interactions, which includes new followers and quit and quitters oh. all all on one email so th- once again free thoroughly recommended and in terms of um <clears throat> follow friday recommendations i'd like to recommend at vala afshar now he's the chief customer officer and ceo um, of enter assist which siemens enterprise and he provides such insightful tweets about leadership, management, and the challenges of being a social business. Great, another tweeting. 
Yes. Senior person. Absolutely. We collect them, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, very insightful. Uh, my second one is for at Carl Wilding, who is Head of Policy and Research at the National Council of Voluntary Organisations, always provides thoughtful posts and he has a deep understanding of the impact of public policy and the challenges that are confronting charities today. And he shares my, my, my great interest in open data, social impact and how we demonstrate organisations are providing social good. Um, I'd also like to recommend at Info for Practice, which is run by Professor Gary Holden, New York University, who provides excellent and very regular information and updates for social work and social care practice. News, research and scholarship, definitely worth following. That's great. We do have some American listeners. Yes, we do. I have been tweeted by some. Yes. Um, but, it, you know, it, what is so lovely about it is the, the international overview it provides. So, um, uh, you know, I value it greatly. Um, and finally, I, I caught up with, um, with, with Mary oh, yesterday at the, um, the uh, Digital Technology and Later Life event. So I'd like to give a follow, a follow Friday to Mary B. Dropby, who is the founder of Dropby, which is a friendly, caring and very supportive online community for older people. And where it, it is quite true to say every member is valued and encouraged to participate. And, and it was really interesting to hear from Mary how it's developing. That's great. Drop by is fantastic. Yes. Uh, Mary's phenomenal. Yes. I, I, uh, you know, you meet Mary and you cannot believe, that, uh, no disrespect, no, but you can't believe that she developed this phenomenal service. I, I think it's great. I'm yes. really, really impressed. And, and they've actually now got an international membership. It's quite fascinating. You know the, the the people interacting on the site. Mm, great, she's quite an quite a tech entrepreneur. Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. And what about you? Thoughts on Follow Friday recommendations? Uh, well, I want to give a shout out to the lovely Mark Sadler. I don't know if you know Mark Sadler. I know him online. I've never met him personally. Oh, he's, but he's incredibly supportive. Isn't he's he? fantastic, mm. I and mean, he's really, really passionate about senior care. And he runs the yourcarehome.co.uk website. Um, and very interestingly, he's just partnered with Revu uh, to provide their care provider review service. So that that's independent yeah. um, reviews that he's added uh, to. Um, to yourcarehome.co.uk, which is great. But he's such a nice guy, and he's connecting me to several people, care homes, etc. He pings me proactively now and again, just says, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do to help? Um, but the reason I'm mentioning was that last week he fall friday me um, in the same tweet as Emma Sams, um, who is Fallon in the Colbys and Dynasty. And my heart skipped the beat because I used to have a picture of my bedroom wall. <laughs> I've shared too much, haven't I? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so, Shirley, what do you have coming up in the next couple of weeks? Once again, very busy time. Um, I, I, I mean, this week is actually the National Conference for Adult and Children's Services. So I shall be um, following the Twitter back channel, hashtag NCASC, um, for insights um, about what's happening there. Now, the British Library are running an interesting debate in their Myths and Realities series, Our Ethnicity and Identity, What Does It All Mean? And that takes place on Tuesday the 13th of November. Sounds interesting. Mm. I, I, I mean, their whole series, I mean, they, they really look at very topical issues and they have some excellent speakers, I have to say. Um, Munch, Poke, Ping, which is a conference about vulnerable young people and social media, which is taking place on November the 19th. And um, Munch, Poke, Ping. <laughs> I, I love it. It's great. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, it, it is a project run by eSafety and child advocate Stephen Carrick Davis, which explores how excluded and vulnerable young people can use social media and mobile technology more safely. That would be great. Stephen's brilliant. Yeah. I really a big fan. Um, that's going to be a terrific event, I think. Um, and sort of, and, and, and following on in a sense from that, um, we've got Interactivism Think Kids Pitch Challenge, which is being run by, by FutureGov. And the challenge is how we can use digital tech to help under-18s get the most out of the internet and stay safe. 
So they're looking for great products, projects and prototypes that help children and parents to get the most out of and enjoy the internet. That's going to be great because they're getting kids to do it. The ideas yes. will be amazing. Yes. So we'll, we'll be following that with interest. Um, and finally, a mention for the lovely Sock Mob. This is great. A volunteer network engaging with London's homeless who've supported a unique social enterprise that offers walking tours of London led by homeless, formerly homeless guides, where the lion's share of the income goes directly to the guides. Unseen Tours brings an entertaining and poignant walk with professionally coached homeless guides and it offers historical but also unexplored glimpses of the city as perceived through the lens of homelessness. Now, uniquely, the tours interweave homeless guides' own stories and experiences and it introduces a new social consciousness into commercial walking tours. And, and I've met the people behind it. I think it is such a brilliant idea. So if you fancy a different sort of perspective on Covent Garden, Mayfair, um, London Bridge, then definitely worth a look. I'm absolutely going to do it. That sounds brilliant. That's my favourite thing that I've heard in a long time since, I think, since the Amazings. Yes. Which I love. Yes. Um, yes. But uh, this is, this is going to be great. It's a lovely, lovely idea. Well, you know, I was talking to my daughter at the weekend about this and, and um, I, I just became aware that people didn't know about Unseen Tours and mm. so I thought, well, we must promote it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, great. so, so those are sort of little sort of snapshot of things going on. I what love about? that, and it's the whole thing about it's you know it's not begging, it's not it's giving them dignity. They're doing Absolutely. a proper job, getting yes. properly paid for it. Yes. They're, they're going to have some something really unique to offer. Yes, brilliant. And you know, I would say if you go on an unseen tour, do use our hashtag #deukcare and and tell us tell us about it. We'd yeah, love to hear. Absolutely, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. And so, what's coming up for you in the next two weeks? I'm going to do some of these things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't got as busy a week as you. <laughs> these, look, these look really great. Uh, most, mostly at the moment, uh, we're letting some more users onto Mindings. We're kind of at that point in trying to scale it up. Yep. So if anybody wants to give it a while, go to Mindings.com. Uh, we've got a brand new website that makes it easier to, you know, for people to see what Mindings does. And we've got that app on Google Play, so it's even easier to get it on your on your, t you know, on your tablet um, or iPad, of course, or if you've got an old laptop, you can try it on that. Um, I'd love um, for, you know, for people to try it out. Uh, we've got a couple of lovely, two people in particular, actually, who uh, their mothers have Alzheimer's and they've been using Mindings and I've been getting some really nice comments over the last few weeks. Um about uh, how they've been using it. One great idea, actually, I'm just going to mention this, was uh, one of these people is going on a trip, going on holiday, and what they are doing is they are uploading pictures and messages in advance of the holiday saying, this is where I'm going, yep. and then another day saying, this is the hotel we're staying in. So it's just planting this reminder a couple of weeks in advance um, of you know where they're going, what they're doing. Yep. And it reminded me, actually, it's, um, it's a technique that my uh, brother-in-law uses and he's a teacher in a primary school and he uses that technique um uh, to prepare his child for yes. upcoming holidays and trips yes. because kids yes. like routine and when the yes. routine is going to be interrupted by this you know complete overhaul of taking them on an airplane and stuff like that so he used to do picture books and here's an airplane we're going to go in that airplane here's this place we're going to do so i thought that was really novel use mm. um, of mindings that's a really good tip yeah. yes yeah neat. excellent Well, that's all from us this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly do. If you did, please help us spread the word. Please do. Go to our website at disruptivesocialcare.com. On there every week we put extensive show notes, links to pretty much everything we talk about and um, links so you can follow the people we mentioned on Twitter. Uh, so go there. Also, our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash disruptivesocialcare and you can follow me at Minding Stew. And you can follow me at Shirley Ayres. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>